So a follow-up to the Panzer I. We saw this model sort of in the background at the end. So uh, let's call this Part 2, Panzer 2. Or maybe Panzer 2 Part 2. No, it can't be. I'm just sort of squeezing this one in because the computer is com has completely frozen. Just the blank screen of Mordor. Uh, and this is quite a <clears throat> nice easy one, so you can make a start on it at least. Oh look, bits have fallen out already. Uh, flexible tank track stuff and the base. Which has all the signs and symbols of having possibly, uh, well not possibly, definitely a little motor and two little batteries. I remember those days when they used to come with a little motor and they used to uh, drive around, not so sedately, and with absolutely no control whatsoever. Anyway, let's make a static model. Here's the rest of the stuff, grey and given at least one layer of wash. Uh, lots of wheels, plus some fellas who as usual I'm not going to make, and they're very, I was going to say 8th Army. Africa core is what I meant. Then here's the hull, or the top of the hull, and here's predominantly the turret and some extra bits and pieces. It should be quick and simple and should come out with a really nice little tank. I am a fan of the Panzer II. The first two parts are quite odd and worth mentioning. Look at that hole where the front geared wheel should be. You get a, an odd just over half of a circle which provides you with the fixing pin or the axle. But on this side it's broken, well not broken, it's cut through and you have to put this bit in which makes up the cut through. Probably something to do with fitting the little motor. Uh, I did have this one, I think it might be, but just odd. <laughs> quite a nice little relic. Usually the wheels on tanks get a bit tedious. Um, loads of little ends or something. So don't mention the Churchill. But really enjoyed them. Nice big round comfortable looking wheels. I had painted the kind of tyre rims black but then I've given them a wash and they've gone a bit pale. So I'll blacken them up a little but I am going to make this one a bit dusty and mucky. And I have noticed in the past I put all that effort in and then I smother it in paint. So let's just see where we get to first. Here's the rather smart little turret. I uh, put the little sort of viewing hatches on. Two are blanks. Um, so obviously in an earlier incarnation they were portholes. And then I'm going to put the top ring on there. That's that ring on. Very interesting thing. They show you it in reverse order in the instructions. So you work your way down from the wheels. There's the ring. There goes the hatch. But then below, you're only just putting the ring on. Which in itself is also interesting because you get the writing up here that says if you want the type of F, glue parts 27. That's one of the viewing portholes. While well, for type G, part 16 and 17, the stowage bin. So it's all over the show. I should have mentioned I'm going for that one, shouldn't I? Anyway, there we go. Oh, and a uh, funny little hatch. I ended up with a lot of glue all over the place. That'll come off. About halfway through putting on all the bits and pieces on the hull, I should have shown it again before I started. Um, I wonder if I've been clever enough. So a follow-up to the Panzer I. We saw this model sort of in the background at the end. So uh, let's call this Part 2, Panzer 2. Or maybe Panzer 2 Part 2. No, it can't be. There's a, this is a, this is quite an esoteric one, this one, isn't it? A bit weird at the start. And now this, yeah. Time ain't linear, people. 
Not when I'm making films anyway. And there it is, the last bit's on. Who gives the knees? It's Yeah, that was esoteric, wasn't it? Anyway, there we are with the last bits on. Lights, stuff, jacks, spare wheels. All need a bit of highlighting. That will come along. And there's the turret with the small gun and the machine gun. Um, very much like early and mid, if not even late period, British tanks. But somehow this one's got... Uh, more go in it generally hasn't it and a little bit more aggressively um, uh, what could you say a little bit more aggressively operated that's bad grammar because I started that sentence off really badly anyway it just seems that this is the real the real start of true modern tank warfare even the Panzer 1 is to some degree or another but this one's really shaping up quite nicely Well, hey, look at that. Got the turret on now. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Didn't need that saying. Um, just got to paint up the tracks and then uh, put them on and then get this onto the bottom of the hull. You could see that coming, couldn't you, really? Right, I'm quite pleased with the um, weathering and some additional mud. On hello, the cat's. It always happens, doesn't it? She just knows she's not getting any attention. There goes the scratching post. Right, right, right. So, the little cat has gone out to um, entertain the little birds, who really don't take her very seriously at all, with good reason. Anyway, there's the muck. Just a little muck. Don't want to go too far on this. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> a little bit on the back wheels just coming up and getting flung off so it's not all the way round this is the messier side and then we go around the back where I've glued a little underneath but not a lot and then a little bit less so that's us I have sprayed um, all of this I've largely gone for the usual dark brown around this end and then I've gone for a paler, paler shade at this end. Much more kind of deserty sand, because I want to go a bit dusty. A bit of muck and a bit of dust. Oh, did I glue some? Yeah, I glued a little bit underneath as well. Just for splatter purposes. And then what I'm going to do is add a few different browns. And then just highlight the tracks with a little bit of sort of gunmetal. One problem with the so I'm very chuffed. Good old me, aren't I clever? One problem that came along then is the fact that there's so much muck just in here that I can't get that back on properly. So I'll carry on painting as if there aren't any problems, and hopefully the problem will just go away by magic. What do you reckon? I've run into a markings fiasco without spending ages going through books, complicated books, that I don't really understand. I, ne I don't understand tank markings at all, particularly German ones. They're very cryptic. Uh, to my mind, anyway, it's how my mind works. Uh, I've run into problems with this one because the instructions... Uh, which I'll show you in a bit, I don't know what I've done with them, are in Japanese, so maybe I threw the English version out. That would be fairly typical. And the images only show this side of the tank, whereas on the other side, in particular, there is a blanked out portal, like porthole, like that one, vision port. So that nice little, that won't fit there, either the blanking was put over the marking or the marking was sort of sprayed on 3D but I find that very hard to do with transfers. We will see that's the case with uh, an Airfix Cromwell tank I think 172nd problem like that as well. So this side I'm kind of making it up there and there and there 
So what I'm going to do is weather them into oblivion. Oh, I think that's the best thing to do. As soon as the 14 started to go wonky as well, I'll move it and then weather it. So, hmm, markings. One good side, one bad side. And here we have it with a bit of muck painted on and outside, thankfully, with a bit of sun. So you can see it looking uh, virtually done. I'm not quite sure what I plan to do next. Um, I'll kind of look at it and think it over. Funny thing is, looking back at these, um, it's, very, it's a very objective thing to do. You look at the model and you think, yeah, I've done a masterpiece. You look at the film and you go, oh, good grief. I have to say, sometimes it's, it's not so much it's got, it's the close-ups that make a difference. It's more the, um, just the context. You're just focused on that and almost nothing else. So this is another one of those classic tanks. And quoting from the Encyclopedia of German Tanks of World War II, it says uh, it was designed to supplement the Panzer I by providing an automatic weapon capable of firing both a high explosive round and an armour piercing round. This is teamwork. And this one was also up and running by 1935. So they've really got a good plan here, very, very strategic. And as I keep saying, this is the future of tanks.